Hi everybody, and welcome to Mike Newrichlow Online, sharing my love for people, wine, food, and all things made passionately. Okay, so today's show, we're doing a two-part series. I want to welcome Rasul Salihi <laughs> from... Good to have you, Mike. Thank you. Thanks for pleasure. having us here. Absolute pleasure. Rasul, we'll call him the Employee of the Month. <laughs> Every month. <laughs> Every month. Of Le Pen and La Stella Winery. So I mentioned we're doing a two-part series. Part one, we're going to go over Le Pen. Part two, we'll talk about La Stella. So Rasul, tell us a little bit about Le Pen. Says something about an old tree or an old pine. What's that all about? Indeed. Um, well, the winery site itself is on the Black Sage Bench in Oliver. Uh, here's actually a little shot of it. The very, very dry and very hot climate of the South Okanagan. On the sandy soil is this majestic old pine tree. And uh, it's amazing. I mean, this tree, maybe the picture is not showing it as well, is a humongous old pine tree. So we just had to pay some homage to it and uh, name our winery and our venture after it. Excellent. So Rizal, tell us a little bit about your background. What got you into wine? What got, there's always that aha moment people uh -huh. have that makes them excited about wine or food or the whole kind of triangle of things. Well, my aha moment into all things, I guess, gastronomy uh, came in <laughs> at a very young age and I only recognized it afterwards by seeing family photos. Most of my photos ended up being in the kitchen area on a stool over grandma's cooking or my mom's cooking and uh, then everyone would make fun of me and would you know laugh and say oh yeah you know as a two-year-old you were telling us what to do mom this has got too much that grandma you didn't put enough of that spice there so apparently I mean a lot of people say it's you develop it I've developed it too but there must be something in you to begin with and maybe uh, all things food and uh, wine uh, ended up being one and then I've been wine as opposed to tea or beer, which I'm also equally passionate about, mm -hmm. perhaps a little bit more so on wine, just because of what wine has been able to do. Um, is, is first of all, it's very gender neutral. Uh, beer has managed to stay with, you know, male drinkers only. You know, mm -hmm. ladies are not participating as much. And wine by itself, uh, it manages to bring people very close to one another, uh, opens up conversations in a magical form. and. The topic of the conversation is what really interests me. Most people with wine, they tend to talk about art, history, travel, culture, all things beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, beer, sports. Nothing wrong with that, but mm -hmm. uh, I think wine has got probably a little bit more interest, and uh, that's why I've devoted my life to it. There you go. Now, you mentioned off-camera. You said something about Yellowtail. <laughs> you, you, you like what Yellowtail has done for the wine world. Industry. Not just necessarily Yellowtail, but Yellowtail-like wines. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, you know, in the beginning, I had a love-hate relationship with them. Now, it's a little bit more love. And um, when we were talking about demystifying wine, we were talking about... Uh, desnobberizing, yeah, deep pretentious, deep pretentious, <laughs> pretentious, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, because you know that's what those wines are really good for. They're the first step. So a consumer that previously was not even drinking wine didn't even know what it is. Um, you know, at least they go ahead and you they pick up a wine that is more consumer friendly. It's done in a low acid, residual sugar. You know, a little bit there. It's very soft, very fruity, tannins on the check, mm -hmm. uh, kind of a wine. And hopefully they, um, you know become curious and they want to see what else is out there and uh, that's why I really like some of those wines for sure as a first step there you go now tell us a little bit more about Le Pen. so Le Pen, it's a very French looking French sounding winery is that kind of the direction you guys are going very you know, much so. wine? very yeah. much so uh, the idea behind Le Pen was uh, to make wines that we dream of making um, we uh, myself uh, the proprietors and uh, pretty much all the individuals involved with the winery have a big passion for French wines and also Italian wines and that's where La Stella comes in um, but the idea here is go for a little tour de France and stop in different areas and pay homage and pay respect to not just the wines but also the tradition the culture and the individuals behind each of those areas um, so uh, we basically if I was to break down the winery we, uh, we have three tiers of mm -hmm. wines We've got the Petit Le Vieux Pain, uh, Sigma Blanc tier, and the Sigma Rouge. Mm -hmm. The idea is that, um, that what I like to call a Wednesday wine. Wednesday something wine. Yeah. very strong in quality price ratio, something that doesn't break the budget, but is the quality and what people come to expect from Le Vieux Pain. But very approachable, I'm assuming. Something that More approachable, definitely, absolutely, yeah. is, is something that uh, when we release is ready upon drinking, where some of our other labels, uh, they could definitely benefit from extended cellar time. Mm -hmm. uh, how long? Uh, we don't quite have the track record. It's on our sixth vintage, um, but some of them you can just tell. Mm -hmm. They're made, made for the long haul. Mm -hmm. um, well, well, we'll talk about that one. That's yeah. the one we're drinking after. Uh, it's a collaboration we did with uh, Iron Chef uh, Rob Feeney mm -hmm. of Cactus Club Group okay. of Restaurants. Yeah. 
Um, here we got two examples of our uh, court here. Really don't have a name for it. It could be varietal, it could be single vineyard, it could also be a blend. And then we also have uh, what we call the Equinox tier. A lot of people say reserved tier. Uh, it's not quite reserved because um, what Equinox uh, wines show is, is something very unique. It could be made at times from very low yields, but at the same time, sometimes, you know, the main label could have lower yields mm -hmm. than the Equinox line. Uh, Equinox is really going back to where we are, South Okanagan. What, what's unique about South Okanagan? What the hell is going on there? Mm -hmm. 49th parallel, approaching 50th parallel, classically cool climate. Yet most people wonder about that and be like, how the hell do you call that place cool climate if <laughs> yeah. the summer temperature average is 37, 38 degrees, goes to 40 degrees? Mm -hmm. That's where it gets the real interesting story comes in. Sure, we are in the cool macro climate, but we are in a very hot microclimate, and that's because of the fact that we are located in the northernmost part of the northernmost desert, okay. the Sonoran Desert. Starts from Mexico, mm -hmm. finishes right in Osoyoos, which is really pretty much just a stone throw from a U.S. border. Um, here is uh, where we have a short growing season, but a very warm one. Uh, and at the same time, the desert climate comes in. That's where we have very hot days, but then evening times, big temperature drops. From 35, 38 degrees going down to 15. Mm -hmm. uh, the aromatics, the acidity, the structure of the wine stays true to the cool climate, but that heat during the day, the way it you know, works on the grapes, uh, brings out you know the, the exuberance and the lushness of the new world. Equinox wine, as the name suggests, equal day, equal night. Mm -hmm. We take it to the next level and we say equal old world, equal new world. Are wines that um, gets us passionate in a mm -hmm. blind tasting format. What the hell? It confuses you. It yeah. plays with your mind. It's showing you elements of the old world. But you're like, it cannot be. And at the same time, it's elements of the new world. And you're like, no, no, it can't be. So that tension between the two and whenever that happens and uh, we usually uh, reserve rights to you know bottle these wines for a period of two years sometimes mm -hmm. we think that it might qualify by the end of the day it doesn't there's a whole blind tasting going on with everyone involved in the winery and i literally mean everyone it's a group decision and whenever they're true to those terms that's where they go into the equinox label so equinox is kind of your very much limited release it's a signature of who label pan is and what you guys stand for more or less. And, and and i think not just us but south okanagan that's what you know I, I like to call it a useful product something that is unique is actually providing something different for the world Excellent. it's not just another wine region it's not just another wine it actually is something that connoisseurs and those who really want to appreciate nuances in the wine can totally see it and get it and appreciate it and understand it mm -hmm. we don't we're tired of or oh, it's good for a BC wine. Mm -hmm. That, you know, holding, you know, the industry's hand like a baby and say, it's good for a BC wine, that's not gonna get us yeah. anywhere. We are going to go after wines that internationally are going to go head to head, toe to toe with some of the best out there. Let, let make the wines make themselves as naturally as possible. Yeah, and that's another thing that when I've spoken to you before off camera, you're very passionate about letting wine speak for itself. Let the grape speak for itself and the terroir speak for itself. It's, it's very important because at, at the end of the day, uh, one, of, one of my own fascinations with wine is, is the intellectual pleasure and the hedonistic pleasure that it provides. Mm -hmm. um, and a wine that is made by a winemaker can be very correct, can be very high quality, but will it have that uh, effect on you when something is done in a very minimal fashion and almost by itself it comes into something that moves you? Mm -hmm. Usually very quality uh, driven wines that are made in the winery, they don't move you in that way. They're just really good, hedonistically, but intellectually they don't provide much pleasure and I find uh, these sort of wines definitely do. Yeah. They make you think, they make you wonder, they make you actually ponder on the idea, what is going on here? But this is go. different. Yeah. So we're tasting today, what have we got? 2009 Feeney's Blend Blanc. Yes. Feeney's Blend, so you said this was an effort together with Rob Feeney and he's Cactus Club, is he not? That's right. Yeah. Um, Chef Feeney, we've always uh, loved what he's been doing. Mm -hmm. uh, his, uh, his team uh, at Cactus Club Group, uh, we came up with the idea and uh, we started working on it together. Uh, we went back and forth quite a few times on multiple different blends. The idea was to pay homage to his cuisine and what he is known for, a uh, French trained chef, but um, with a big passion for Asian flavors and Asian ingredients. Mm -hmm. So we set out to make a wine that actually also captures that. It's an aromatic blend, mm -hmm. which BC does a really good job mm -hmm. of. Uh, so many people do an outstanding aromatic blend. Uh, just very quickly come to mind uh, Hatfield's Fuse, for instance, from mm -hmm. Blasted Church. 
uh, Joa's Noble blend. Uh, however, uh, most of those wines are either off dry or all the way quite sweet. Mm -hmm. uh, we set out to do something a little bit different uh, on the nose, as you can probably mm -hmm. tell, very aromatic, very floral. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but it surprises you on the palate. It's a very dry wine, very food-friendly wine. Yeah. And that's a Le Vieux Pen twist. On the nose promises something, on the palate delivering something mm -hmm. else. Uh, we set out to taste this wine with a whole different set of uh, signature dishes from Rob Finney. Mm -hmm. And we found out it almost works amazingly with every single one of them. Uh, flavors are complementary and the acidity, the low alcohol, which is a really good thing these days. The alcohol laws. And yeah, yeah, there you go. So. It's a very neat wine. It's very bright. It's fresh. Um, it's got, yeah, definitely like Rasul says, very much of that floral aspect, a little bit of kind of that lemon acidity. On the palate though, it's got that surprising savoriness. It's very savory, it's dry, a little bit of kind of that chickpea almost, that sort of thing. It's a very nice wine. Viognier, Chart, Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Gris. Yep. Yeah. Uh, dollop of uh, Roussin actually there. Mm. Um, there's an interesting um, white almond, raw almond mm. note on the finish. I personally associate that with Roussin. Um, it's, it's just really nice. It keeps it almost a little nutty, but not toasted nutty, like a bitter green nut finish. There you go. Yeah. To keep it away from being cloying and sweet. Mm -hmm. um, Excellent. I think, uh, I mean, we released this uh, mid-summer mm -hmm. with them. Uh, there might be still a few bottles here and there in the Cactus Club locations, and we saved a tiny little bit of it over at the winery. Uh, that's the only way that it's available for purchase. So any of you folks coming to the Okanagan, uh, just ask for it. We probably have a few bottles tucked away in the back. Perfect. And if people want to find out more information about Le Vieux Pen, do you guys have a website they can go to? Oh, absolutely. Uh, LeVieuxPen.ca. L-E-V-I-E-U-X-P-I-N.ca. Excellent. I'll have a link to the video be or to Sweet. the website below the video so you can click straight on Thank if you, you want to go check it out. Anything else you want to add? It's a really damn good website, actually. We spend a lot of time on it. Very consumer friendly. Uh, yeah. We tell you anything and everything we do. Uh, there's no secret to what we do. Uh, passion, dedication, that's the secret. I mean, uh, I remember our winemaker said it best, said, so lucky to be here, because literally, uh, a lot of people m set out to make the wines that we are making, but here we are actually living that dream. And uh, it really moved me, and it really made me think of how fortunate I am to be associated with Livia Pen, and to be able to have proprietors that give you the field, give you the financial support to do your geeky little projects, <laughs> and to be able to, you know, really make wines that we dreamed of making. There you go. And if you do want to see a little bit more of Employee of the Month, Rasul, he's also got some videos on their website, too. You can see him showing you around the winery and telling yeah, you a little bit more. We shot a few episodes them. about some of the practices we do. Uh, the falconry for bird control, our own composting program. Uh, you know, we, we set out to do everything organically and sustainably, and we actually take that very seriously, uh, is, is what we believe in. It's really the only way to do it. And South Okanagan, I mean, uh, a lot of people are saying, it saddens me to see not everyone is growing organically. It's so, so much easier. Sure, 2010 was a little bit trickier, you know, a lot of humidity and rainfall. But typically speaking, it's such an easy region to be growing organically and sustainably. Very dry, low humidity, virgin soils, easy to work with. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for having us here today, Rasul. Cheers. Here's to continued success at Labour Pen. Thank you. Excellent. And stick around for the next episode if you want Cheers. to find out about La Stella.